Hello again. So it's uh, three fifty UK time. So we are almost reaching uh, the uh, end of our uh, conf uh, online conference. Another three panels or three slots, including this one, and we couldn't really uh, uh, wrap up all these uh, all these conversations without shedding some lights into one of the core uh, business businesses of uh, wholesale which is voice um we've had some insight we had some insights yesterday uh when tackling the ott topic and my guests here um gave us a bit of an insight into some of the figures uh and the impact on ott on the voice business but I'm happy uh, today to really warmly welcome uh, Telegeography, who had to be part of this event, uh, as they are, you know, the the by default analysts in this industry. Uh, so I'm really happy to welcome Patrick. Question on this uh, on this uh, uh, panel. Patrick is a principal analyst at Telegeography, and he has a very extensive uh, number of uh, years of experience within uh, the wholesale industry. Today, he heads the international uh, voice traffic, the cloud, the one infrastructure research services, so a broad scope of different things. You also focus on Africa and Europe, Europe as markets, where you specialize in international bandwidth, in internet infrastructure, uh, in one services, terrestrial and submarine cable. So it's massive. <laughs> so today we won't ask you to cover the whole lot because otherwise we could be uh, we could be here for or we could have an, an extra an extra day. Very interesting topics, all of them are. Um, but really, we would like to hear more from you on the voice trends, historical trends, and uh, what you see in the markets uh, that you know, figures even from a few years back are always helpful to understand what's coming ahead of us. So uh, the floor is yours, Patrick, and a warm welcome from all of us. Great. Thank you very much, Susie. It's great to be here. Um, thanks for the great introduction. Now, uh, let's look at a little bit of voice. We've talked about a lot of other things, but let's go back a little bit to the core um, in telecom and if we can start up the... There we go. Okay. Um, so... Today, I'll be talking about voice, as, as Susie was saying. Um, at Telegeography, but we've been tracking voice since um, the mid-90s, mid-late 90s, up until today, still going. Um, of course, covering many other things, like Susie was talking about, but today will just be voice. So let's look at trends in international, in international voice. And let's start with going over what we're going to cover in the presentation. Um, I'll be covering the international voice trends, but uh, Looking at the OTT effect, of course, because that's uh, it's been a great effect on voice, but on all network um, um, services um, with the OTTs. So we'll talk about that, and this will cover a little bit of what you we covered uh, yesterday. I think we had a, a brief of five minute spot where I spoke, um, and then we'll move on to looking at the fixed and mobile voice. We'll look at the evolution of subscribers and traffic, and then we'll end off looking at traffic trends, the shift of traffic and revenues by regions, because um, of course, all these trends really depend on what region we're talking about. So we'll end up with that. So first, let's talk about traffic, international traffic growth and rates. Um, traffic peaked, or now here we're just talking about international traffic, so cross-border traffic. Um, international traffic peaked in 2014 at just over 550 um, billion minutes and has dropped down to, in 2020, about 400 billion minutes. Um, but let's track the trend of growth. Like I said, we've been tracking voice since the um, in telegeography since the 90s. And from the 90s up until 2007, um, we saw growth that averaged between 10 to 15 percent. And in 2008, with the recession, uh, we, that was the first drop we saw below 10 percent growth. Otherwise, it had been pretty steady for the 100 years before that. And then... Um, we saw an uptick, a slight uptick a couple of years later as we saw these uh, unlimited voice plans taking off. Uh, but then there was the, the harder drop afterwards in 2012. And then by 2015 was the first time um, there was no growth in voice traffic. 
And then since then, we had, the, we had a drop in 2017 to uh, by 9%. Um, and then the last couple of years, air quotes, it's been holding steady at about a 5% decline annually. So what happened? Where did, where did the traffic go besides the, um, um, the recession? What happened afterwards? OTTs, of course. Um, in the early 2000s, we first saw um, the first popular voice apps that we knew, the voice apps or VoIP apps at the time. But these were on fixed networks. These were the apps um, from, for example, like Netophone, Delta 3, et cetera. And then Skype came along, of course. And Skype is very um, the popular one that really took off, of course. Um, and then we see a little bit later, 2010, 2010, 2012, we see the other mobile apps, voice apps, starting to take off, um, Kakao Talk, Line, Viber, and then other messaging apps like Facebook Mess Messenger and WhatsApp that around 2014 added voice. And this is where we start to see a change. Now, if we see, um, if we take, we look side by side the, the carrier traffic and the OTT traffic, if we go back through the 2000, 2010, around this chart, 2006, this is where we see kind of the fixed line voice apps. We see it starting to take off OTT traffic, but um, carrier traffic is still growing very strong. But then we see 2010 to 2012, where the 3G mobile starts um, really to start um, increase penetration. And then you see the OTT traffic really start to take off until 2016, where we see the crossover from um, that OTT traffic for the first time um, grows more annually than uh, the carrier traffic. This is uh, another a slide that kind of shows what we were talking about, um, where as we see the 3G plus um, mobile uh, penetration increase, so you have the voice apps once you hit um, 3G, uh, you see the decline in originated and um, terminated traffic, and that's all traffic, mobile and fixed. But and let's take a, a step back and, and, and talk just one second about, um, there's this common idea that, um, uh, that with all the messaging and messaging apps that people are turning away from voice and that's just part of the impact on um, why voice is declining. We do a, a little exercise here where we, we take the carrier, um, the carrier traffic for, for example, 2020, and then we add the OT to traffic on top of it. And we see when we add the two together, we see that um, traffic, voice traffic is still growing um, about 10% or more annually or has for the last few years. So this indicates or probably indicates that it's not voice that's disappearing. It's just voice that's moving on to different platforms. Okay, now let's switch a little bit. Let's take a look at, um, go, well, we're still looking at traffic, but let's look at the, the fixed mobile divergence. Um, in this chart, uh, we track uh, both fixed and mobile traffic uh, on the terminated and originated side. and even though mobiles first um, uh, overtook in terms of voice in 2002, we don't see uh, in subscribers, we don't see um, traffic going more to mobile than to fixed until um, 2009. In 2009 is when um, mobile terminated traffic uh, surpasses fixed terminated traffic. And then in this chart, we see in 2012, um, mobile originated overtakes fixed terminated in terms of total annual traffic and total traffic. And so um, in 2019, 2020, we see about 75% of uh, mobile of terminated traffic international. Remember, we're only talking international here is on um, mobile. And then for originated traffic, about 60 or over 60% of voice traffic is originated on mobile now, where of course in the early 2000s, it was all fixed. Now switching a little bit to, um, to subscribers, uh, like we said in 2002 was the first year that uh, wireless subscribers overtook fixed subscribers. So just over a billion and uh, fixed subscribers were just below a billion. Um, but then we see pretty strong growth all the way you know, up through 2010, 2012. And that's where we see um, uh, the 3G, 4G, et cetera, kick in. 
And now um, we're seeing, of course, a lot of uh, high penetration with wireless. And then we'll, we're going to talk about that in a second. But we're still seeing growth, even though in many regions you're at 100% or much higher than 100% penetration. We're still seeing growth in mobile. And we'll, it looks like we'll continue to see we forecast um, 1% to 2% growth um, for the next five or six years. Now, we see a, a switch over um, in the last decade from um, fixed uh, or originated and terminated traffic to mobile. And now let's take a look at um, by regions. And here we see that um, uh, for this is looking at terminated traffic, that international traffic to emerging mobile is really uh, dominates in terms of, of traffic um, over the last over the last four or five years. And um, we see that in this in this slide too that fixed and um, fixed is starting to drop off a little bit. Um, but mobile, mobile or advanced mobile is is also increasing. But um, these are we see a shift from earlier in the early 2000s from higher amounts of traffic in the advanced or um, mature markets, um, and this has shifted over the last decade to the emerging markets. So this is really the focus of where where traffic is going or has been going. Let's look at the next slide. Now, in this slide, what we're looking at is um, the top two. We're looking at the type of subscriber, fixed subscriber versus mobile subscriber, and then broken out by region. And then below that, we're looking at the traffic originated versus mobile originated. And we see in the um, in the top two, uh, fixed subscribers, we see at about a billion. And for the last 10 years, has been slowly declining. Um, where we see on the right with the mobile subscribers broken out by region, we see a lot of growth up to 8 billion um, subscribers, so eight times that of fixed subscribers now. Uh, and if we look closely at this, we see in Europe, Latin America, and the US, it is, it's flat, not much growth there because um, we're hitting over 100% um, penetration. And Europe since 2010 is over, has been about 130% um, penetration. So not a lot of move to, uh, for growth there, new growth there. Um, but if you look at Africa and Asia, um, we see we still see growth in these areas. And uh, Africa, in fact, um, for the continent um, is at about 87 percent um, penetration. But you have um, some countries like Ethiopia is a great example where it's only 50 percent penetration. So there's a lot of growth and that's a very large, large population, a lot of growth um, that's going to be happening there in the next few years. Um, and even Nigeria, where we it has uh, it, they have an 87 um, percent penetration rate, still growth there. In Asia, we see is a huge chunk of subscribers, of course. But here uh, in this slide, we're combining Asia, so we're combining um, uh, West and East Asia. So we have basically you have China is about a third of of the 4.5 billion subscribers or, or the population. Um, India is another 4.5 or sorry 1.5 billion. India 1.5 billion and 1. 0.5 billion, the rest. Um, so what happens in India and China kind of dictate um, what these graphs look like. So um, China is actually, um, we see high penetration rate, 110% penetration. Um, but in um, India, it's it's only, air quote again, 87% uh, penetration. So we're seeing growth there. And that's why we see um, the growth in subscribers for the for the coming years. And then if we drop down to the, the traffic, fixed originated and mobile originated, we see from the last slide um, the crossover in 2012 where uh, traffic and fixed originated starts to drop where for a few years, right after 2012, the mobile originated uh, continued to grow. Um, although it is starting to decline, of course, too, um, the traffic levels for mobile originated traffic um, are, are remaining a little bit more steady than the than the fixed. And one other note for uh, Africa, um, in many of these uh, regions or countries where we're still seeing growth and we see a lot of traffic, you have to remember that, for example, in Africa, 95% um, of, of international traffic, voice traffic that goes to Africa is terminated on mobiles because there's very, very few fixed lines there. 
And then switching a little bit to um, looking at revenues for the next for the next couple slides, last two slides, um, we'll be looking at revenue. Here we're breaking out again by um, emerging versus advanced markets um, and looking at uh, fixed and mobile. And we see in the last decade, in 2009 to 2019, we see the advanced fix declining in revenues and the emerge fix has dropped a lot in revenues. Um, advanced mobile is, is stayed about the same, maybe a little bit more, but emerging mobile is, is where we saw all the growth over, um, the last decade. And then if we look at the, um, total market here, we're looking at total market revenues, um, uh, looking at wireless wireline, um, broadband, um, and for 2020, um, we saw about $1.4 trillion uh, in revenues and service revenues. But here, what we're talking about, when I give these numbers, we're talking about all of the, for example, on the wireline plans, we're talking about the uh, voice plan, the broadband plan, IPTV um, altogether. And then with wireless, we're talking about voice, the, the voice and data um, roaming, et cetera. So everything combined, retail, um, wholesale, everything, $1.4 trillion. Um, now if we, if we dig down a little bit and just look at voice, so we don't want to say it's all doom and gloom. Yes, we see, uh, traffic levels dropping, et cetera, um, and shift towards OTT, but there still is, uh, uh, a lot of money or revenues being generated in voice. Of course, uh, we tend to forget this when we're talking about all of the new, um, um, services, et cetera. But, um, if we look just on the retail side, um, we found for 2020, uh, $60 billion in revenue, about $40 billion in, in wireless and $20 billion in fixed. And that's just for international voice. That's, um, and then um, if we just look at the wholesale voice, um, we saw about $16 billion uh, in revenues. Um, and that's been holding pretty steady. And $16 billion is actually a very um, conservative estimate because we're just counting one call. Um, so the minutes for one call, when we know that for wholesale, um, one call may go over several um, wholesaler networks. So um, you could have uh, per call two to three times the, the uh, revenue that, that we're recording. And also this doesn't include what I was just talking about is uh, interconnection um, um, revenues by domestic carriers um, of the incoming international calls. Okay. And let's uh, end this off with uh, looking uh, forward. Now this, we're just looking at mobile. Um, we see it really growth uh, depends on region. And we talked about this a little bit before um, that uh, we're still seeing growth in Africa and a bit in, in Asia. And this breaks out Asia a little bit more. Um, globally, uh, we're, we're looking at the next five, six years, uh, about 2% growth. Um, but by region, Africa is the largest grower, it's probably because it has the smallest base and there's still room to grow there. Um, we're looking at about four and a half percent. Europe, it, at least it's not negative, but um, a little bit of growth, but in Middle East and Africa, you, we're seeing the most. And I will end it with that. And then uh, we can talk a little bit more with uh, Susie. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Patrick, for, for that really, uh, for those insights, very useful, very useful. Um, so voice, obviously voice is changing, but voice is still here. <laughs> so voice is, definitely. voice is still here, as we can see. Um, I'd have one, for, so, what, so please, if you have any questions in the audience, feel free to ask uh, and I'll relay them on to uh, Patrick. One question that I would have is, um, you you covered obviously you covered up to uh, the, 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 the 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 2018, 22, even 2020 at some stage. Um, uh -huh. COVID. Uh, have you? Uh, what kind of what what was the impact of COVID on the voice? Okay, uh, good question and a very popular question. Yeah. So uh, what we saw was um, we've been. A lot of people ask us this, but the way we track voice, um, we're actually collecting a lot of that data right now. But what we did is we surveyed um, uh, 25 major carriers um, last year and mm -hmm. asked them about 
March 2020, when the first lockdown and the first uh, uh, spike of COVID, um, what happened? Basically, asked them what was happening with their traffic. And um, the majority, a slight majority, about 55, 60 percent, uh, all had a spike in traffic. Um, and uh, and then we asked what happened about the, the next quarter. So Q2, what happened? We saw most carriers did see a spike in traffic, international traffic we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But then in Q3, they say it, it dropped down to last year's levels. So it's a very short term spike in traffic. Um, and we're collecting data right now to see what happened after that. Um, and on the roaming side, that's actually where we saw the biggest hit, of course, because everybody is stuck in one place. So there's not much roaming. So we saw um, most carriers, I think 24 out of 25, reported that they had decrease in roaming of 10 to 20 percent. Yeah, and I guess that's also the trends that we've been seeing and we've been discussing throughout uh, the event yesterday and today, roaming being quite affected by uh, by the pandemic. Thank you for right. that insight. Um, that insight. Um, one of the questions that I would also have is, obviously, we talked a lot about OTTs. We know that OTTs have impacted both enterprise and consumer, but to a large extent, the consumer-based uh, traffic for wholesalers. Um, do we have any insights on the enterprise traffic uh, from the data that you can have access to? Uh, and and what are the main trends there? Um, yeah, and unfortunately for us, we don't we don't split out the enterprise traffic or national or look at national. We just look at international. Um, but I can speak anecdotally. Uh, of course, we we work with regulators and we get information from all the regulators on uh, trends. And in some of the European countries, we did we do see data on enterprise versus private. And we found that, um, but this is on a very limited sample size. I'm talking about mm -hmm. three or four different regulators I've talked to, um, European regulators, that um, it really depended on, it depends on the country. In some locations, in Nordic country, um, uh, enterprise voice compared to uh, uh, consumer voice held steady or even grew a little bit. Um, but we saw in other countries like in France where enterprise voice was actually dropping at a similar rate as, as the um, uh, residential or consumer voice. So it, it really depends. But I think globally overall, and this isn't backed up by a lot of data, but this is very anecdotally, but we do see enterprise um, is not falling at the same rate as, okay. um, as residential. Okay. Yeah, good, uh, good, uh, good feed. Um, I have a question from the audience, actually. Um, what are the trends on national voice, uh, in, particularly, in particular, sorry, B2C okay. communication? So I guess it depends on which national uh, country. Yeah. But, uh, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't we don't cover the national national. So I really we don't have much uh, insight on that at all. The way that we've always collected data, it's always been the international and tracking. Um, uh, and yeah, we we have very little to know insight on national. So I'm very sorry about that. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's probably some uh, some uh, some things uh, we we probably need to think of uh, in uh, in the upcoming uh, events or so. Um, PSTN. Yes. Do it exist? Uh, yes. It's a good question. And this is something that we always, we kind of forget when we're looking at everything else. But when we're, when we're talking about all of these 9 billion subscribers, about a 1 billion um, fixed and 8 billion mobile, um, this, is, this is the PSTN. We're talking about, um, uh, yes, parts are changing, uh, transport is changing, et cetera. But um, these are all phone numbers that we have that we call that, you know, when we have our WhatsApp, we have our, our, our mobile cell phone number that we use to get into WhatsApp, et cetera. So uh, we have this idea that it's gone, but PSTN is still there. Um, and um, if you think about just in terms of numbers, you have 9 billion. Whereas if you look at um, some of the other apps like WhatsApp, Messenger, et cetera, they're in the one to 2 billion. So uh, this is a very extensive network that still, you know, is in service and still generating revenue. So it's not gone. And this, we had talked about this earlier, but uh, I remember my first conference at GTM in 2000. Uh, uh, and I remember AT&T getting up to speak and saying, you know, switched voice and or voice is dead. It's all voice over IP now. I'm like, wow. And here we are 21 years later and we're still collecting. 
data <laughs> and uh, we're still doing the PSTN breakouts, et cetera. And um, so PSTN is still around. <laughs> cool. Um, and the last question from me, uh, what would be, I mean, we've seen, obviously we, we've looked at historical data and, and that's what you are, uh, you know, you, you give us a lot of meaningful insights into what the, the trends have been. But if you, as a, as you, because you live and breathe that data, or, you know, all day long, um, if you had to to really pin down some major trends, I mean, I, I know we've been through. I mean, two two years ago, we wouldn't have probably uh, forecasted COVID. That's for sure. But uh, if you, you know, based on what we know. If you could, if if you, you know, in terms of traffic trends, in terms of developments, what would be the trends you would be really, um, you you could potentially see happening? Yeah, and I mean, it's going to be boring, but it's like historically, if you look at the data, uh, we see the trend. Like if we are tracking subscriber trends and traffic trends, etc., we're seeing it's kind of stabilized in a sense um and it's holding steady like traffic and and pricing like um termination uh pricing etc is not plummeting at the same rate as it was just a few years ago it's kind of uh steadying out and same with subscribers etc so which is a good thing which means you know it's not completely disappearing uh both voice traffic uh, um and and for subscribers is still continuing and um, like kind of in the historical data, we do see, okay, in fixed line, et cetera, we're, you know, such saturation, such high levels of penetration, yes. But really in the emerging markets, um, in emerging as in, yeah, emerging and developing markets, uh, we still do see there's, you know, some growth over the next uh, five years or so. It's not uh, the AT&T doom and gloom, it's all over in 2005. You know, we'll see at least after 2025, it hasn't, PSTN, it's not gone yet. Um, and um, I don't think voice traffic either. I think we'll, we will see, see growth, particularly regionally um, in areas like, um, you know, India and um, in Africa. There's a lot of places in Africa. Like I said, Ethiopia is one of those markets where it's 50% penetration. It's one of the largest um, um, uh, countries in Africa. So they have a lot of room to grow in terms of just subscriber, but that you know entails growth of traffic, et cetera. So following the trends, that's what following, it's following <laughs> the trends. So we'll still be talking voice next year for sure. Um, and yes. we carry on uh, we'll carry on looking forward to uh, to uh, receiving and seeing your reports uh, to provide right. us with uh, more insights into uh, into the, the the current developments in the international voice markets. So um, with no further ado, I'd like to thank you very, very much for accepting this invite, Patrick. It's been very, uh, I mean, as I said to you offline, you know, we can't really be talking also without having telegeography. It doesn't make sense. So uh, we're very happy to have you here. We you, I'm sure will benefit, will benefit from a lot of your insights and figures and the audience will probably enjoy that as well now and, 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 and uh, as we play. So many thanks for uh, being with us today and talk to you very soon. Great. Talk to you soon, Susie. Thanks. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.